This morning, we wanted to slow down and just stop, and um, we do this every year. We wanted to recognize our military, our men and women in service who put themselves in harm's way um, and keep us safe. And um, let me just say, um, yes, um, let's stand in their honor. Yeah, good. I was going to tell you to stand. <laughs> we don't have to. Amen. Awesome. Yeah. Amen. If you would. Yeah. Hold on. Remain standing if you would. Um, let's remain standing and. Um, <laughs> yeah, let's remain standing and honor them. And um, uh, let's just take a few minutes here now and just um, honor them, all right? with a few next minutes as we just kind of really focus in on, again, one of the greatest gifts that we've been given in this nation, which is our military. Let's do this. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. It's my great joy to honor our veterans today. We here at Liberty University seek to honor our veterans every day. Currently we have about 32,000 veterans serving around the globe and 10,000 spouses that are supporting those veterans. Over 80,000 Liberty students and graduates are now serving or have served in the military. This is the first school that I went to that actually has that spiritual connection and it's just been total life building, having classes that include Jesus and, and God into your life and help you see the, the perspective of each subject in that way. Coming from Liberty, you're gonna have that great backbone and that moral compass to do right and help lead other people and become a better leader than just the military can make you. They actually put God in front. And at the beginning, I didn't, I, I was feeling uncomfortable because coming from a military background, everything, the military and Christian, you know, is, is really, really, really difficult and different. But then after, I say six months, I felt like, like I was called to be here. Like I, I, I didn't show to come here, I was pushed to move here. Um, and my life started. I became, um, like, I started going to church more. Um, I started uh, reading the Bible and actually getting into knowing the Lord. Being spiritually equipped for the fight, I would say is just as, if not more important than being mentally and physically equipped because physically, uh, you can continue to be broken down mentally according to your buddies to your left and right, they can weigh you down more than the enemy can. And so spiritually sometimes is the last line of defense that you have and is really the first as well. Before anything else hits you, your daily life in the barracks, in the military, your spiritual component is gonna be the thing that is at most attacked. More than anything else, it's your spiritual life. Liberty prepared me for basic training spiritually by just um, giving me the, the knowledge of how to truly rely on Him and all that I do. Without Him, there was no way I could have gotten through basic training. You are allowed to have your Bible, 
And that was my crutch to lean on every night. Um, in the bay with all the girls, I would invite them to do devotions. I started with none and I ended with eight. So it was a, it was a great experience. I felt that Liberty truly had a vested interest in me becoming a student and they were really concerned about my spiritual growth. And since I've been here, uh, the students have come up to me and sh shook my hands that knew I was in the military and appreciated my service. And that's, that's all the payment I need to be shown appreciation for the service that I did. That's all the thanks that I need. Uh, I gave myself to Christ about uh, last August, and ever since then my life has gone into a positive direction, and that has all started with Liberty University, and I have told all my friends, all my military friends, and all my older friends who didn't think me, me as an older student had a future at, as a student here, uh, I've proved them wrong, and the Lord has proved them wrong. Here at Liberty University, we seek to honor those of you who have put your lives on the line for liberty, for justice, for freedom. We seek to honor you today. Thank you. Thank you for standing in harm's way. Thank you for literally giving your lives that today we might enjoy the freedom that God has given us. God bless you. May God continue to bless our country. May God bless America. Can I ask for those in this room who are currently serving in the military, in active duty, reserve, or guard, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, would you please stand and remain standing? Just remain standing, the rest of us will join you. Please, everyone, please stand. Not only in this room, but around the globe right now, we have thousands of military members who are online with Liberty University. Just a little over a year ago, I was deployed to Qatar, to Qatar. And in came to the chapel a student looking to do a chaplain interview because that was part of his assignment for his chaplain course. And he found my deputy. And he did the interview and then my deputy came to introduce him to me because he realized I was his instructor. I tried to play innocent. I says, I, I don't know what course you're talking about. He says, Dr. Keith, Chaplain Keith, I know it's you because I've been watching you on the video for the class. Well, you know what? Right now, all across the world, we have students that are serving in harm's way. They're deployed really across the planet, and we seek to honor them today. We seek to honor those who have gone before who have given their time, their lives, have been separated from their families. We seek to honor those who have given their lives, who have given their bodies. Right now there are many people that are suffering mortal wounds, even our speaker today, Dr. Tim Lee, for the price of freedom, that we could be here today and enjoy religious freedom freedom of speech, freedom to lift up the name of Jesus, amen? And so we want to honor our veterans today. We want to honor them with our thoughts and with a prayer, and I'm going to end this prayer with a moment of silence, and that's your opportunity to bring that military member to mind who you know, who you're related to, who you care about, or who has gone on before, and to lift them up in prayer. Many have paid the full measure. Let's remember them and their families as well. 
Shall we pray together? Our Lord and our God, we thank you for a country that's free. Lord, we're free to worship. We're free to assemble. We have freedom of speech. And we know that even though we enjoy that freedom, that freedom came with a price. Freedom isn't free. We know our Lord and Savior paid the price that we could be free in Christ, free from sin and death. But Lord, here on this planet we also realize in America we enjoy freedom because many people have served in our serving in harm's way. And we pray that you would bless them this hour, wherever they be. We pray that you'd bless their families and watch over them. We pray that you would protect them. And Lord, for our Liberty students here in this room and around the globe, we pray that they would know today that they are being prayed for, that they are being lifted up before our Savior. Lord, we thank you for those that have given their lives. Even this hour, there are funerals being conducted across America at military seminary, cemeteries and at Arlington. And there are family members that are standing there at the side of a coffin, and they too have paid a great price and will continue to miss that loved one. Lord, we seek to comfort them through your spirit today. We pray that you would comfort them and wrap your loving arms around them. Lord, we lift up our prayers now individually in a moment of silence to pray for that veteran, that military member that we know, that we love, that we care about, and maybe for that one we knew that gave their life. Lord, we lift them up in our silent prayers even now. 